In the last lesson we talked about Scoop and how that can be an ETL tool for us to move data back and forth. So let's take a look at how really that works by moving some data around. What I'm going to do is move some data that I have already pulled out of Hadoop and put into a summary table and that'll be kind of like my fact table. And we're going to put that into SQL Server. So let's take a look at the command that we'll use to accomplish that. So I have a script that I wrote called export words. It's a very short script and it starts with the command scoop. That's the program I'm running and the subcommand in there is export. So uh, get your head around that this is from the point of view of the cluster. So if I'm exporting data I'm actually pushing it out of the Hadoop cluster and into something else. Scoop gets the name of the driver I'm going to use. So that in this case is the JDBC driver for SQL Server and then I give it a connect string. So this is a JDBC connect string, which is kind of like a OLADB connect string, sort of. And we tell it that our SQL server has this IP address. We give it the SQL username and password, which you can see, very secure. The database where we're going to put our data. The table I'm going to put the data into. And then the export dir. Now this export directory is, again, within the HDFS cluster. So this might be a lot of data, it might be distributed among many machines, but Scoop doesn't really need to know that, it just needs to ask HDFS for that data to bring in and then it will push it up into SQL. Then because the data that's stored in the HDFS at the end of the day are really just files, we give it a little bit of information about how the fields are terminated, and these are terminated by tab. And then the verbose is just says I want a lot of output along the way. On the SQL side, I've already prepared this table called Hadoop Words. So if I look at my SQL database, I have some tables in here in AdventureWorks, and I created one called Hadoop Words that has the structure that is exactly the same as what I have in HDFS. I just need to make sure that my data types are compatible. Um, Scoop does a pretty good job of converting between uh, simple data types on each side, so I don't have to be too explicit about that. So I've just set aside some varchars and int for the count. Move that out of the way again. We'll go ahead and run this command on the Linux side here. If I open up a command prompt and paste in that command, what you're going to see again, just like with Hive and with Scoop, is that Java programs are going to be written on the side and submitted to MapReduce to generate the data. And then as that data comes back to Scoop, it will be pushed up through JDBC to our SQL database. So now our Scoop job is done, and if we kind of back up, we see the MapReduce finished up. It again reports all the MapReduce counters that we saw before. The difference is what happened because instead of creating a file within HDFS or a file on the local file system, we've actually taken that data and instead put it into a relational database on our Windows SQL Server. So now if I query that table, I have data loaded into it. And this data was placed here by Scoop. And it has the same content I can see that I would have seen if I looked at the same file over here on this side. So again, the same, same data. And now I don't have to use MapReduce to query this data anymore. I don't have to use tools that connect to the cluster. I can in fact just go ahead and do the same kind of query that I did before, uh, but do it here. So if I want to do word count, oops, sum from uh, Hadoop words. Something like that. Now with the data exported into SQL Server, I can go ahead and use the tools I'm used to to query this data, pull it into Power Pivot, write reports and reporting services, and use it just the way I'm used to within my relational database environment.